Why are you in a space of nothingness right now? There are things at the core of who you are that have been there since the beginning, since before you were ever in this world. You were created with a design. Aside from just self-discipline, how do you cut back? Look, God doesn't care if you have things. He cares if that thing has you. What do I do with this pain? Because it sucks. Whatever you reach to when you're stressed or anxious, that is your functional savior. God wants to bring back more into your life than that which was taken. What does deep work mean? Because we hear all the time, do the work. And it's kind of an annoying term, at least to me, like do the work. It kind of means like, you're not there yet. Like you're, you're not, you know, you can't meet me there yet. But what does do the work mean to you? For me, it's a very, very personalized experience where, you know, there are things at the core of who you are that have been, um, that have been, like I said, there since the beginning, since before you were ever in this world. You were created with a design. And coming into this world, both nature and nurture, both the environment physically that you were born in and the um, those who loved you and structured your emotional framework and all that, either helped nurture that in the, the right direction or they, they took it in a different direction and they created a lot of additional work for you to now overcome. So with the work that I've done, and it's not been easy, a lot of tears, a lot of going before the Lord and saying, all right, God, I'm done like pretending and like trying to be something or someone that I'm not. What do I do with this pain? What do I do with it? Because it sucks and I'm tired of acting like it's not there. When I talk about doing the work, that's what I'm talking about. So if someone hears this and they're like, I'm ready to be more honest with myself, what, is that, what does that look like in practical steps? I would seek out. I would seek out somebody who you trust, either who has the, um, the character, the virtues, the life that there's an essence to them that you desire to have. I would implore anybody on this call to reach out to that person and say, hey, you know, could I sit down with you for half an hour and just share to share what's going on. Like I said, it took me a long time to get to that point where I was willing to say like, I just need help. I just need help. And so just by you externalizing that, I found Eric, there's so much power in just like vocalizing and releasing it as opposed to like bottling it up. For all men, we just we need to reach out to each other. It's so important. You know, when we want to like reach out and do this, it's so hard to get over that hump. And what would you, what would you, uh, what's a tip or an idea of how to just overcome that? We've all struggled with social media, being able to instantly compare yourself to 50 other people in a matter of 10 seconds. Well, this person can do this. This person's amazing. Why am I not talented in music like Eric is? God, like, why didn't I get that gift? Why don't I have all of these stories that the devil just feeds on? Um, so eliminating that, cutting back on that, if that's something that you find is a, a vice for you or something that creates confusion about who you are, what your gifts are, I get to celebrate that I'm not a I'm not going to be a Formula One race car driver like I wanted to be. I'm not going to be a, a, a fighter pilot like I wanted to be. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be these people. <laughs> um, and I'm really okay with that. Aside from just self-discipline, is there any, like, are you deleting Instagram occasionally? Like, do you just decide, like, set your mind I'm not going to look at it? Like, what, how do you cut back? What I found was really helpful and simple for me to do, I don't, I do not get on my phone at all for the first 60 minutes of the day. Just don't touch it. Don't get on it at all. Whatever you reach to when you're stressed or anxious, that is your functional savior. Even if you are professing that Jesus is your Lord, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that when we're stressed and we need comfort, whatever we go to is our functional savior, a.k.a. God, right? We're going to that for and that can be porn, it can be food, it can be internet, it can be sleeping, video games, any number of things. We've all done all of them or some of them. Um, that's fascinating. Okay, so and so you get honest, you express that, and you say the burden becomes lifted. That's right. And then and then what happens? I have to know where where are my triggers? Where do I get susceptible? Where is the crack that I am? I've just said, oh no, it's just how I am, or oh no, it's just like. It's just whatever. It's just snacking. Like it's just it's just a little evening snack. No, I'm a, I'm that thing. Look, God doesn't care if if you have things. He cares if that thing has you. He he doesn't care if you have ice cream, but he does care if that ice cream has your heart, and you're going to that ice cream for something to satiate that can only come from Him. When I'm tired, I'm susceptible. When I'm hungry, I'm susceptible. And if I'm if I'm overwhelmed, um, in in a state of anxiousness. Idle hands are the devil's playground. 
And so if you're idle, if you don't have anything to do, the devil's going to come in and meet you there and just have a field day. Mm-hmm. What is it? Why are you Why are you in a space of nothingness right now? And helping this person come back to a, a real deep level of responsibility and accountability um, of the choices they have made that have gotten them to the place that they are, whether good, well, both good and bad, and saying, okay, what what can we change now? What are practical things that we can change throughout your day that you can start by just saying, we're going to make it one day sober. Sobriety starts with one day. Sobriety is today. That's it. Mm-hmm. So what do we need to do today? You know, you, you so many things hit home. One of the things that rings true for me is purpose. And yeah. uh, when I feel like I'm living a purposeful life and I have purpose, dude, vices just don't have the, like, they just can't get the claws into me because I'm living for a purpose. I believe that there are certain things that have put inside of you, obviously, musically inclined, right? There's a musical element that like God sowed that into you where you can see things, hear things that other people can't. And I believe it's to his glory that you pursue that, that you, you massage that and say, okay, like, how can I use this? You, you know, he's given me a gift with emotions and relationships. I can see relationships and I can have long conversations about them without getting tired. And, you know, my bandwidth is pretty wide for it. How can I use this? To, to, to glorify you, where is there a need? Where is there a place that um, you know I could insert myself and, and help bring people to know you better, whether that's through healing, whether that's through music, whether that's through pottery, that's just a, that's a really powerful thing. You're speaking to my soul, man, this is good stuff. If you could wrap this up into one solid message from, from your heart, what would you end with? And I believe that anybody listening to this right now, God wants to bring back more into your life than that which was taken, whether it's self-inflicted or not. God is the great redeemer, and he is wanting to redeem things in your life. Even, yes, the things that you, right now in your mind you're saying, he could never redeem that. Yes, he can, and he will. You play a role in it. You surrender. You yield. You get around other men. You confess, and you receive the love and peace that he has, and he will redeem it. So beautiful. Thanks, brother. Thank you for having me, Eric. Truly a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this episode. More importantly, I hope you feel closer to your creator. If you find yourself wanting to strengthen your relationship with God, I'm a huge fan of the Skylight app. It's full of beautiful, high quality daily spiritual practices. Finally, never forget, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him.